Question number 12, the Honourable David Parker. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Economic Development. Does he stand by the statement reportedly made on his behalf two weeks ago that the Saudi sheep deal is Murray McCulley's and all questions should be directed to him? <laughs> The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, yes, I stand by the fact that in response to a media inquiry as to who they should speak to about the Saudi Agri-Hub, my press secretary responded that the Minister of Foreign Affairs is the responsible minister of this issue, and that's because he is. <laughs> Supplementary. He's not there. Order. Order. <laughs> Supplementary question, the Honourable David Parker. Does he deny that his office also contacted a journalist to complain that Radio New Zealand had mentioned him, Mr Joyce, in a Saudi sheep story. <laughs> the Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, I do deny that because I understand from the Press Secretary that it was not a complaint at all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Order. Order. Supplementary. Order. Does... Order. Does, does so, Order. I haven't called the member yet. Supplementary question, the Honourable David Parker. Does his often office often phone up journalists asking that Mr Joyce's name not be associated with Murray McCulley's deals? <laughs> the Honourable Stephen Joyce. No, not at all. I enjoy being associated with my friend Mr Murray McCulley, who I have known for many years, and he is a very efficient and effective Minister of Foreign Affairs. <laughs> Supplementary. Supplementary question, the Honourable David Parker. Does he ac accept that his department, NZTE, has primary responsibility to administer the millions his government is spending on this Saudi farm in the desert? And if so, why has he repeatedly refused to answer parliamentary and media questions? The Honourable Stephen well, Mr. Joyce. Mr Speaker, uh, the member may recall that there was a Cabinet uh, document uh, put up by Mr McCulley, which is in the public domain, in February of 2013. It's been provided to the Labor Party, where Mr McCulley uh, took the lead on that issue. He has asked NZTE to manage that issue, which, as far as I'm concerned, they're doing well. And, uh, but Mr McCulley has retained the leadership on that issue. Uh, point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order, the Honourable David Parker. I think my question was pretty direct. Order. Was really... no, 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 there were two parts to your question and the second part's now been addressed. Supplementary. Supplementary question, the Honourable David Parker. Oh, come on. I hope, I, I hope the media heard that. Order. I didn't, he I didn't hear the interjection, <laughs> but the interjection from Mr Brownlee will cease. Order. Supplementary question, the Honourable David Parker. Will the Minister assure Parliament today that, in his opinion, all parts of the Saudi sheep deal with Al Khalaf are 100 per cent proper and complied with government procurement and appropriation rules? Come on, Stephen. The uh, Honourable Stephen well, Mr. Joyce. Mr Speaker, to my knowledge, yes, but the reality is that particular arrangement run by Mr McCulley, I know the member put down some questions to him a couple of weeks ago and I think they were well satisfactorily answered. Supplementary. Supplementary question, the Honourable David Parker. Is the reason his staff have said to the media that all questions about the Saudi sheep deal should be directed to Murray McCulley is because he doesn't want to be tainted? Oh, that's right. The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Mr Speaker, the member, I think he's wasting the House's time. Yeah. I genuinely believe that's what he's doing. He's so far going down the rabbit hole, he's going to hit his own tail shortly. On the Saudi Agri-Hub, Minister McCulley has worked with both MFAT and NZTE. He put up a Cabinet paper. Cabinet agreed to it. The member needs to find something to do with his time. Order. Order. That concludes... Order. That concludes questions for oral answer. I call on the government order of the day.